We're a real family now. In many ways, things will be like season one, but more streamlined. Now Jerry and I are happily married parents, and the idea that I was motivated by a fear of you leaving can be eschewed. Eschewed? You've never used that word. Maybe you are a clone. <laughs> it's not like Rick would tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Fellow Rick and Morty fans, can we all just calm down about the Szechuan sauce? I want Szechuan sauce! Where's my Szechuan sauce? Standing on fast food restaurant countertops is a very Jerry thing to do if you feel better than a fast food employee. That's what I thought, bitch. You little punk ass. <laughs> this is the best. Now that that's out of the way, be sure to subscribe to Universe for more on your favorite TV shows and movies. Now let's look back at the Smith family over the course of season three. I wanted to go through each character's arc and discuss what was revealed about them over the course of the season. The hero's journey story arc doesn't work for a situational comedy, because change would involve losing the situation that is the setting for the situational comedy itself. Everything needs to appear having changed throughout the season, but in reality stay relatively the same. So let's see who changed, and then check out Jerry. Cut the crap, Rick, okay? You proved your point, I get it. Let's just go home. Coolsies. The season premieres with Summer as a self-absorbed Team Rick teenager. She is angry at her father's apparent weakness when her parents separate, but after some post-apocalyptic rebellion, she forgives and accepts her father as he is. Dad, I wanted to give you this as a reminder, not to look back. Thanks. She bonds with Beth through boyfriend and inside-out Titan trauma and finishes the season closer to her family and mother, despite the possibility of Beth being a clone. What? Jerry has gone through a lot this season. He bonded for a millennia with Rick and nothing changed at all. He found out Rick removed some of his most painful memories and put them in VHS tapes, and he has come to terms with being divorced, not having a job, being a bigot. Look, I'm a closeted racist, and I'm sexist, and selfish, and I dragged us all into my sexist, racist, bad things because I'm stupid. His father-in-law ruining his marriage on purpose, his children not wanting to be around him, and having such bad luck that the general forces of nature want him to suffer. <laughs> Jerry starts dating again and finds he isn't ready to jump back into the single life. He finishes the season without changing at all, other than possibly getting weaker and more pathetic. But when he doubles down on the love he feels for his family and ex-wife, he's redeemed somehow, despite learning nothing. Even if Beth was a clone, Jerry wouldn't care. Do you remember that episode when he humped a hologram and said it was like the best sex ever? Oh, 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 oh my god, that's the best sex. I've ever had in my life. Beth started the season completely convinced she had her life figured out. She would divorce Jerry and go on with her life better for having done it. Her father was a good guy and her relationship with her kids was A-OK. -okay. I think it's possible that you and your father have a very specific dynamic. I don't think it's one that rewards emotion or vulnerability. I think it may punish them. I think it's possible that dynamic eroded your marriage and is infecting your kids with the tendency to misdirect their feelings. You. Mom! Both of you two. The crescendo and crash of this delusion happens in the ABCs of Beth. At the height of her belief in her father, she then discovers and confronts his feelings about her. You were a scary f kid, man. Oh my god. Beth realizes she doesn't know who she is, and she's offered the choice of being cloned and leaving, or staying with her family. After her decision, the show gets very ambiguous. The season ends with Schrodinger's Beth. Aren't there like infinite timelines? Can't you just move to one where I don't know I'm a clone and where a different but identical version of your authentic sociopathic crazy bitch of a daughter can keep making you proud by being somewhere else? Morty has changed. He's not the frightened 14 year old he was in season one even at the start of season three when he confronts the Council of Ricks on his Rick's behalf. At the end of that episode, though, we've seen a Morty that contains a fair amount of anger towards his own universe's version of his grandfather. Who's stupid now, bitch? Over the course of the season, Morty has shown his capability for violence, technical ability, rage, intelligence, and puns, which at times can rival Rick's own. Well, I got pubes, Commander and Queef. We saw the limitlessness of a Morty who lacks the self-doubt and loathing that was removed by the detoxifier. Totally understand, Dwayne. You're the boss. Heinholz Biotech. Million and a half at 33. Yeah! Huh. 
You little f***ing monster. He voices an outright opposition to Rick and sides with his family as opposed to just going along with the next adventure Rick has planned for them. Morty, where's my portal gun? Let's get out of here. I'm staying here, Rick. Are you? This in turn causes Rick to adapt. This season, Rick has stayed the most powerful man in the universe. He has battled the strongest governments, villains, heroes, presidents, and political issues. He always comes out on top. This hasn't changed since season one. Look at that. Jeez, I must have planned a whole party. Invited a bunch of people. Not bad, drunk Rick. Not bad. Rick gets his way because he has the power of a comedy writer who creates the world around him. Rick is always aware of tropes and he hates them. I refuse to answer a literal call to adventure, Morty. Let it go to voicemail. Rick! But his protege has been dealing with Rick for far too long. Morty knows how Rick will respond to situations and at times is actually one step ahead of him. This has caused a change for Rick, but not because Rick himself has changed, it's because Morty has. Yes, yeah, let's do it! Together, you old son of a bitch! On three, one, two. At the end of the season, the Smith family is all under one roof and Rick is back in the garage. They know more about each other than they did previously, but for the most part, the only change is that we, the viewer, feel slightly different about the family's dynamic. We've come so far and not moved at all. There's no premiere date yet for season four, but we'll keep an eye on any news from the Citadel here on GameSpot Universe, so make sure you're subscribed for more on your favorite TV shows and movies. Thank you so much for watching. I love you.